and check these. Okay. Okay. So let's let's check the answers to the warm up, and then if you have questions, we can go over that before we check our homework. So I put a couple of sentences and one question up here, and I asked you to correct the errors with the gerunds and infinitives. All of these have mistakes in them. So the first one was, I was kind of thinking about what Faye Young asked last week uh, in our last class about the going to and how to use that with page 344, the expressions with go. So here's an example of future tense which is the am going to with a base form verb. And then we're also using one of the expressions from the bottom of page 344, go shopping. So what we did was we combined those two ideas together. So we've got the future verb, am going to go. We're using go because we want to use this fun activity shopping. Okay, so we put the two ideas together, and this is correct now. I'm going to go shopping later today. We do not need the to after go. Okay, like I'm going um, to go to shopping. We never say to shopping. Okay, um, and then we also don't want to use an infinitive to shop because we have this as one of our common expressions, these activities like shopping, skiing, jogging, that we like to use in the gerund form. So that's why we put it with, in, I mean, in the gerund form. Okay, any questions there? No. Pretty easy. All right, let's go to number two. Study online is hard because we don't get to see our whole class together. Now, Amani says this is good, but it's, I think that's Amani right there. But no, it's not. And then, Walter, you said, oh, let's put a gerund instead of an infinitive. But why don't we go back and check our list on page 342. Page 342, do we have get on the list? Mm, oh, no. It's not on the list. So, therefore, we do not have permission to use a gerund after get, okay? So we're going to keep it as get to see. Okay. We don't get to see, that is correct. So how do we make the change? Um, let's go back to the subject. What is the subject? Study, we. Yeah, and how do we make a subject how do we transform a verb to make it into a subject form? Oh, studying. There you go. See, I knew I knew it was in there, in your mind somewhere. It was just all mixed up oh, with. You, you made a sample with this with working. Yeah. The last last year, I can remember now. Yes. Yeah, so um, that's the challenge is once you see something that's going to going to help you but you have to go back and it actually takes about five different times of you seeing something and noticing it and then changing it oh it has to be this after you do that about five times you should be able to remember it at least in your short-term memory um, so here we are again correcting and checking those subjects that we talked about on tuesday when we want to use a verb form uh, as a subject in the subject position, okay, we need to use a gerund. So we're going to take out study, and we're going to put in studying. 
Okay, studying online is hard because we don't get to see our whole class together. All right, let's go to number three. And who said it's correct? Walter, you, you think yes. it's correct? I think it was correct. It is correct. Okay, so here's what we do. We're coming up against that normal yes. way of thinking that you, you, this is maybe the way you speak English. And we, we're coming up against this because we have to face the facts. We've got to look at, can we prove that this is true? This is right. So we're going to go back to page 342. Do we see a Ford on the list? No. No. So we need to ask a question. Wait, maybe this is not possible. Um, and <laughs> I... I just realized I made this even more challenging because on page 346, you still don't see a Ford over there. <laughs> and I will do this sometimes. Sometimes I, I challenge you beyond what the book says. <laughs> so the book doesn't have this word. So what you would do is go do a Google search. And um, you remember when I said you guys can look up a list of verbs that have infinitives after them and of verbs that have gerunds because your book is only giving you a small amount of verbs, very, very few. There's actually, um, I would say, more than 100 verbs that take gerunds and more than 100 verbs that will take infinitives. So this is one of those that needs an infinitive. So Amani got this one right. Okay. He just needs a little question mark at the end. Yeah, afford to buy. I can't afford. Oh, what am I saying? It is on your list. I didn't see it because I was looking for A for afford. Look at page 346. It is on your list, but I used it as a question. So um, I think they came in at the beginning. Yeah, can afford and also afford. It's so offer. It offer? Yes. No, offer is one of them. Yeah. Offer is there, but look over to the right side on the last column. It says can't afford. Oh, you're right. So, so have, yeah, it looks very similar. So I um, have to change can. Yeah, that can was the challenge. You that was the challenge there. Okay. So, and I brought this up. Now I can remember what I was doing. I put this one here because I want you to see why they have parentheses. Why they have parentheses around can't. What that means is you can use a Ford by itself. Like I can say, um, well, most of the time we do use it with can and can't. Um, will you be able to afford this? Yeah, you can say that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of it without can and can't, and it's really hard to use it. <laughs> Most of the time we use it with can, can, can could, couldn't, uh, because it does imply, it has like this uh, meaning of ability to pay for something or ability, um, you have enough money for something. So they put it in parentheses with can't because you can use it without the can't. You can still use a Ford with infinitive. Um, and you can also use it with can. Like in my question, I use it with can. And then you can also use it with could or couldn't. So that's why I think they put those parentheses there. They're just showing you that's one option with afford. Okay, so now we have it correct. Can you afford to buy a new car? And then at the bottom, I just put a quick review of what gerunds are and then what infinitives are. So we talked about what they look like, 
and we talked about where they go in the sentence. Right? Does anybody have questions about this page? Yeah, uh, but it will be on one. We we'll write on this uh, this phrase sentence. Number one. Yeah. Uh, what are you asking? Because my, my, my Wi-Fi was kind of bad at the time we were talking about number one, so I couldn't hear. Oh, number one. If we just suck, uh, underline the sentence and circle. Yeah, number one, you guys were both correct, except uh, Amani, you need to have the yeah. um, capital I. Yes, I see. Yeah, that's correct. You did that one right, okay? Okay, guys, let's check our homework then. Let's look at exercise three. Money is a little noisy on your side. Yeah, that's some that's some quiet right there. Okay, thank you, Amani. Let's look at exercise three. Okay, so exercise three and number two. is buying yes do is buying so i'm going to zoom in and show this page to you uh, two is buying three sweeping oh. four getting five oh. talking and six working, seven opening. Okay. Did you get oh. those correct? I I put an, put another one. I just, I just go ahead, Bonnie. What's your question? Yeah. Um, I got all of them correct, but. Saved number three. Cleaning. Mop. Oh. Cleaning or mopping. Something like that. Uh, oh, actually, what am I saying? Yeah, it the says same. with a Jaren. These are just suggestions. <laughs> oh. There's more than one possible answer. Yeah, I put mopping or cleaning. Yeah, that's good for number three. And four, I get in like you and looking for or finding. Okay, so she's talking about finding a different job, yeah, or looking for a different job. That's good. And five, going, keep going, because they always say that. Oh, okay, number five. Are you listening? Yes, keep going. Keep going, I'm listening. Um, <laughs> keep going. Oh. Maybe. I didn't yeah. think that way. Keep, keep going. Talking. Keep you going. can use the link for, for talking. You can use it. So, yeah, you could do that. Going or talking. Okay, what other ideas do you have? And number six. Uh, working, studying, or judging? Yeah, uh, keep on studying, keep on working. And then the you said judging? 
number. Keep on judging. Yes. Maybe you're judging in <laughs> you are the other person. Do you want to take a break? Oh, so you're talking about this word at the top that I wrote with a J? Yes. Keep on judging. I, I guess so. I mean, if if you're in the process of judging. Okay. I mean, you could use a lot of things. You could say, keep on running. You know, keep, keep on running. running. Yeah. Moni, you have another idea? Say, continuing. <laughs> well, if we have keep on, we don't need to use continuing because that has the same meaning. Oh. Yes, keep. Yeah, keep on. Okay, so let's go to exercise four, the listening practice. Number one, finish doing. Yes. Number two, talked about seeing. seeing. Yes. Number three, would you mind yes. explaining? Yes. Number four, thinking about not attending. Yes. And number five, keep trying. Yes. Guys, okay, just let me know if you have questions there. And we'll move on to exercise six. Exercise six. Walter, what did you put for number two? Number two. Let me go to the page. Oh yeah, we did these in class, but but that's okay. Yes, yeah, we did this one. My my problem is not one. The question is, what does he like or she like? When mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the question is, one, what does she or he often do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's take a look at those. Yeah. For example, number two, I put they like to go boating. Right. Um, number three, he went camping last summer. Yes. Uh, let me see what was diff difficult. For example, number 13. What? No, no, this was no because this they like to go skydiving. Yes. I don't know. I can find now. <laughs> I can't find it. Okay, well let's look at um Okay. So number six was number like six. to go skiing. Yes. And number seven was likes to go hiking. Oh. And then number eight, what does Sonia often do? So it's an indoor sport, and she rolls a 13-pound oh, ball. Okay, this is bowling. I put she often goes bowling? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, perfect. Yeah, number eight, she often goes bowling. So when you say often you... Are you pronounce the T often or often? Off she Sarah often goes. I I kind of say it, but it's very slight. Okay. You can okay. say just often with no T, or you can say it just very soft. Often, often she often goes. Yeah. For and then, number yeah. nine. Go dancing. Oh, I put they probably do a lot dancing now. Well, but we we need to use go, right? So they, yes. they probably go dancing a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, they probably go. So we're taking do out of the question. Do as the, like, what do they do? We're taking that second do out of the question and because that's 
the main verb do and we're replacing it with go like i can say what do you do on the weekends i work i stay at home i watch tv so when we ask a question what do you do what do they do we're not going to use do in the answer okay unless it's something like do laundry or do homework but most of the time we take out do and we put in another action verb so what do you like to do i like to go dancing i like to take a walk okay so number 10 we're going to say um Taylors are going to go skating. Oh, tomorrow. Yes, because it's future. Are going to go skating. And number 11, they like to go sailing. Sailing. Yeah, that's great. And number 12, tourists go sightseeing. Yes. And 13, we already did. It's go skydiving. And then what about number 14? Can you guys both answer that question? What do you like to do for exercise and fun? I like to go working out. Oh, man, we got stuck on something. We <laughs> don't use working, even though it's working out. Um, we don't say it like that. We oh. we can't use it with working out or exercising. Um, oh. We would have to say, I like to work out. Okay. So go is kind of particular. We've got to pick something from the list. There's some more things, but not everything we can use after go. Um, like you could say, I like to work out. I like to go to the gym. I like to exercise. But it's asking, what do you like to do? I like, I like to lift weights. But still, we don't use it with go. So for go, we've got to choose one of these from the list. I like to go swimming in the summer. I like to go running in the park. I don't know why running is there, but working out is not because they're very similar, but that's just how it is. Okay, Amani, do you have an idea, something you want to share? What do you like to do? I would just say, Running, go running. You like to go running? Okay. Okay, guys, let's let's go down to exercise nine, page three forty six. So number number two on exercise nine is two B. Yes. Number three, to visit. Or can I put to go to? Number three? Yes. To go to. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And number four, to get to. Oh, wow. What time number do you five. To get to what, Chicago? Yeah. What time do you expect to get? Uh, to get to. What did you put? To fly to or to leave? Oh, what time do you expect to fly to Chicago? Yeah, you can do that. What time do you expect? to leave Chicago. Yes, you can do that too. <laughs> okay, great. 
Right. So to leave Chicago is just the opposite of to get to Chicago. But it's still a good question you can ask. And number five, to be. Yes. Number six, to be. And number seven, to be, and then to hear. And number eight, to buy. Okay. And number nine, to lend. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to say to borrow? Could we say to borrow me some money? To borrow me some money. In number nine, what do you think? Armani and Walter, can we use to borrow in number nine? I don't know what borrow means. No. You don't know what it means? No. Can you, you cannot use that. You cannot, money. To borrow. You refuse to borrow. My friend offered to borrow me some money. Borrow. Okay. Um, I, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think it sounds good. It doesn't sound good. Yeah, that's a good answer. It, it doesn't sound good because when you think of borrow, I want you to think of uh, taking something temporarily. So we cannot, we cannot say borrow me. Like I cannot say, hey, I, I forgot my pencil. Can you borrow me your pencil? You cannot say borrow me. Because borrow means um, to take something temporarily, like you're going to give it back. So we cannot say to another person, hey, can you take me your pencil? Right? We can't use take me. So we can't use borrow me. We have to say, can I? borrow your pencil that is the correct way to use borrow so can i borrow that means can i take and then lend means to give something temporarily this is really good for my spanish speakers in the class because and you, you guys have one word pre, presta, i think but in English, we've got two words. Um, borrow is to take something temporarily. Lend means to give something temporarily. That means you're going to give it back or take it back. Okay, so here's the correct way to ask. Can I borrow your pencil? Or you can ask, can you lend me your pencil lend me because lend me is the same as can you give me your pencil so with money the question will be can i borrow you money no we can't say um borrow you no. because remember borrow means to take so we cannot say can i take you money okay so with borrow we don't need a person after that we're going to just say the thing can i borrow some money can i borrow your car can i borrow some uh i don't know some paper and then lend how do we use lend? Can you give me an example? Can you lend me money? Yeah. Can you lend me some money? Can okay. you lend me your car? 
Okay. Okay, so that was a free lesson. There's no charge for that. Um, so let's go on to number 10. Number 10, to eat. Yes. Number 11, to watch and then to go to. Or to and see. Or which one did you put? Um, to see? Both. To see and to go to. See a movie with her, and she agreed to see the football game. Yeah, yeah, you can use to see for these. Do you want to see a football game? Do you want to watch? Do you want to go to? Yeah, go to is obviously you're you're going to be at the actual event. Um, I want to see a football. I saw a football. Um, yeah, I guess you can see a game on TV. Yeah. And number 12, to get to. Number 13, to see. And number 14, to hurt. Yeah. And 15, to tell. To tell? Yes. To tell time. To tell time is like to interpret the clock. I didn't put anything because I didn't, I don't know the answer. So I, to tell time? Yeah, to tell time. Because so time is confusing. <laughs> right. It's because I'm going to draw a little picture here. When you have um, one of these clocks, okay? I remember my kids when they were in first grade and second grade, they didn't know what all these numbers on the clock mean. You know, so they might see a number and they see, um, they say, okay, and I say, what time is it? And they say, it's, it's 12, 6, you know, because they don't know how to tell time. They don't know how to count, oh, that's, you know, five minutes is, you know, you have to count the time. And then so that means 30 minutes, right? So that would be like 1230. They didn't know how to tell time when they were little. So that's what we mean by when, when we say tell time, we're talking about interpret the clock, the meaning. Does that make sense? Yes. That's uh, was was ten. Number ten. Yeah. Number ten is to eat. You said to eat. To eat. Okay, to eat. Questions? Anybody? Nope. Okay, guys, then we are ready to continue in uh, this chapter. Look at page 347. Okay, what is this telling you here? Um, Walter, can you read where it says some verbs are what? Some verbs are followed by either a gerund, as in A, or an infinitive, as in B. Usually, there is no difference in meaning. Examples A and B have the same meaning. Okay, so what we have here, this is the good news for you guys. These are the easy ones because you can put an infinitive after these verbs, or you can put a gerund, and both will be correct. Okay, so this is kind of the good news box, but you can see how small this box is. There's only a few 
verbs that can have a gerund or an infinitive after them. And in this case, I like to run or I like running. They have the same meaning. And students sometimes ask, well, which one is more common? Honestly, I hear I hear both ways from native speakers. I mean, they're both very common, so I don't know of a difference between these two. Okay, so that sounds pretty pretty easy, right? Yeah, because there are um, a few. Yeah, there's only a few of these. Um, and you can choose either one, a gerund or an infinitive. That's what makes them easy. But, and you know there's always exceptions in English, look at the small letters under the box. Okay. Um, it says, would like, wait, no, well, that's not the box I was hoping for. Okay. Don't look at the, the words under there. I'm just going to give you another example up here. Because um, a couple of these words that they don't have here are going to have a different meaning. So let me give you an example. And you, know, you guys know I like to give you more than what the book is actually giving you. So take a look at these two examples. Both of these are correct sentences. I stopped to eat fast food, and then I stopped eating fast food. Okay, They're both correct as far as grammar, but what do you think about the meaning? Do they have the same meaning? Mm, I think the second one is like present and eating right now. The first one is something I did. Okay, that's interesting that you say that because um, you're kind of right, but I'm not exactly sure if you're thinking the same that I'm thinking about it. So basically what you're saying is they they do have a different meaning, right? Yes. Right. Okay, so that is correct. When you say I stopped to eat, I'm going to show you, I'm going to write underneath that what it means. It means that you're driving on the road and, oh, man, I'm so hungry. Okay, I'm going to stop to get something to eat. I'm going to stop my car. I'm going to stop driving, pull over, and get something to eat. So I put this word in order to. And later we're going to talk about what that means when we're using an infinitive. But basically, that's the meaning. I pulled over, I went to McDonald's, and I got some food. Okay, but all of that happened in the past because I have, I stopped, right? Um, so it's in the past, but it's uh, for the purpose of eating food, okay? The second one, it means I quit. You don't eat fast food anymore. Exactly. I quit eating fast food. This is talking about forever. I don't eat hamburgers anymore. It's kind of like when we say I quit smoking. I stopped smoking. Very different from saying I stopped to smoke. Okay. So there are a couple of these words. Um, 
finish is one of them. Remember is one of them. I think there's three or four of these that have a different meaning, but it's not in your book. So they're kind of going easy on you guys here. But for you guys, you can just remember this little short list and um, just remember they can have gerunds or infinitives. Okay, so let's compare that. Let's look at a couple of, of more things here. Okay. Okay, let's let's use something like um let's use go bike riding. Go bike riding. Okay. This is another one of those go with gerund activities. So how do we use go bike riding in these sentences? Anybody want to try? Okay. I'd like I would like to go bike riding. So you're just using the infinitive, right? Yes. Yeah, so, that's correct. To go bike riding, okay. What about the I like? I like question. I like going bike riding. I like bike. I like going bike riding. What about I like to go bike riding? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. So this one has the two options. I like to go bike riding or I like going bike riding. So my question is why? Because they both have like. But why is the first one, why does the first one only have the option of infinitive? Can anybody answer that question? Because it means it has the same meaning. It has the same meaning? Is would like the same as like? No. Oh, I was asking about the second one. Did you say okay. why we use infinitive or gerund at the second one? Is oh, okay. Saying? So I'm asking, when I say the second one, I mean, would like must have just infinitive. Like can have gerund or infinitive. Why? Why are there two different options here when they both have like in them? Always like. Has, no, I don't know. Has to go with infinity. Okay, let me show you in your book. Look at page 346. Page 346. Okay. And you see in the, the list of verbs on the left side, would like. Does everybody see that? Yes. Okay, notice that would is not in parentheses. That means you have to put would and like together. When they are together, they're going to have just the infinitive. I would like to eat. I would like to go. I would like uh, to work. Okay, so we're using infinitives after would like. 
wood. You can also use wouldn't. But um, basically, would like is talking about your preference, what you want. Okay, so it's kind of like your future or your preference. Like, I would like to eat. I'm hungry. That means I want to eat. Okay, now look at page 347. And you see like on that list. Yes. Okay, it's on a different list. It's in a different box because like in this way is talking about in, in just the general meaning of like. Like, like. <laughs> um, we can use this one in past. When I lived in my country, I liked to go hiking or I liked to spend time with my friends. We can use like for present. Um, I like to watch Netflix. That's talking about my general preference. So and and we can change this, we can conjugate this verb. That is why we can use it with infinitives or gerunds. I like to go shopping. I like working on the weekend. So I can use infinitive or gerund. But when I'm using would like, it's kind of changing the meaning. I'm talking about what I want to do now or in the future. I would like to be a manager one day. So I'm talking about what I prefer, what I desire in the future. So it kind of looks like they're the same verb, but they're really not the same verb. So they belong to two different categories. Can everybody see that now? Yes. And that is what makes these kind of tricky. If you if you look at them and you really notice specifically the verbs on each list, you'll begin to see that sometimes they seem to be the same verbs on two different lists, but they're not because they have a different meaning. So why don't we do this? I'm gonna practice for a moment. And who do we have here? Is Faye Young here? Oh, he's not here yet. Okay. So I want to practice with you guys. I want y'all to practice asking and answering this question. We're going to take these two verbs and put them into questions so we can practice this. So I have a question, what do you like to do and what would you like to do? So they have different meaning. What do you like to do? That's talking about any time, just your general uh, personality, what you like. What do you like to do? I like to read. I like to uh, be outside. What would you like to do? I would like to get a job soon. I would like to speak English better. Okay, you guys see the difference? I would like to to work in uh, a big company. So what I want us to practice is using an, a gerund and infinitive with like to do. What do you like to do? I like to read. I like I like exercising. I like going to the gym. So we have options, infinitive or gerund. The second question we have to answer with infinitive only. Okay, so we're we're playing around with the grammar. I want to see if you guys can answer these appropriately and with the correct grammar. So go ahead. Uh, who wants to start asking the questions? The easy part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants the easy part first? Me. Okay, and you can add words to it like, what do you like to do in your free time? Or what do you like to do in class? Or whatever. Uh, you can if you want to. Okay, so go ahead. Walter, ask 
Amani in a question. Okay. Amani, what do you like to do on weekends? Okay. Just to <laughs> uh, let me on uh I like to play games. Yeah, oh, good. I like, I like to games. play games. And what's another way to say that? I like playing games. Good. Good. We've got two options. Okay, Walter, ask him the second question. Okay. What would you like to do? Mm, I don't know. What would you like to do? next year okay that's good uh, i would like to go visit my country to go to visit yeah i would like to go to visit, to go visit. yeah i hope so yeah that's a good one i would like to go visit you can actually you can say to go visit to go to visit or to go visit my country. Okay, so that is a that's for the future. Good. Um, now, Amani, I want you to ask Walter the questions. Uh, what do you like to do on weekends? I like to I like to visit my friends or I like to go out I like going or, out Yeah, I like going out. That's possible too. Mm -hmm. I like going out to eat. What would you like to do? What would you like to do at the end of this month? At the end of this month? I don't know. I would like to. Um, I like to. I don't know. <laughs> At the end of this month, I like to visit my country, but I can. Yeah. I Great. would Good. like to go out without restrictions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would like to receive my my uh, permanent resident card. Yes. Before the end of this month. <laughs> yes. Yeah, those are some good examples. Okay. Okay, guys. So turn to page 348. 348. And let's let's do a little bit more difficult practice here. Page 348. <laughs> we'll do one more quick practice and then we'll talk about prepositions. So page 348, exercise 12, you can see a gray box, yes. a gray box in the middle of the page. That is how you're going to start the sentence. So you can start your sentence with I like, I enjoy, I don't like, I can't stand, I don't mind. However you want to start your sentence, look at the gray box and choose one. And then you go down to the numbers, number two, three, four, and you're going to use either a gerund or an infinitive. Now, some of these require gerund, and some of them require infinitive, and some of them you could pick either one. So let's see how much you can get correct, how many you can get correct here. And Fei Young, welcome to class. We're on page 348. 
So I, I gave an example here um, in the blue letters for number three. I started with I don't enjoy, and then I used wash, but I have to change it to gerund, washing, because enjoy is a verb that needs to have a gerund. I don't enjoy washing dishes. And actually, that is true. That is my least favorite chore of the house. I would rather mow the grass than do the dishes because I just don't enjoy washing dishes. So you guys are now going to share an example. You can choose any verbs from the gray box, and you can choose any of the verbs from number 1 to 12. Okay. All right, and speaking is better if you can just speak without writing. So I would prefer if you can just think about it and then speak it without writing it first. So who wants to start first? You, you guys can turn on your microphones. Who wants to begin? Okay. Okay, we got two guys that are ready. Um, Amani, you go ahead and start first, and then we'll have Walter and then Ria. All right. I don't. I don't. I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy going uh, to the party where I don't know anyone. Yeah. Me either. I don't enjoy going to parties where I don't know anyone. But, but you chose number nine. That's a good one. Okay, Walter, it's your turn. Yes. I I was to say the same sentence, but really, <laughs> really, <laughs> I don't mind going to parties where I don't know anyone. Don't know anyone. Okay, so Anyone. I don't mind means it's okay. I, yes. I'll do it. It's not a big problem. But because money use, yeah. I don't like. <laughs> okay. Another one. I like okay. live, living in this city. Yeah, that's a good one. I like living in this city. Good. Okay, let's give Fei Young a chance, and then everybody will get one more chance. Okay, Fei Young. Uh, yes, ma'am. I enjoy uh, eating cookies. Okay, I enjoy eating cookies. That's a good example. Okay, Amani, it's your turn again. Okay. I I like eating. Um, I didn't hear you. Say it again. I will, I will change. I will change that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hate driving in the city during rush hour. Yeah. You kidding me? No, Walter's again. <laughs> That is so funny. Okay. okay, Walter, this is, you got to think fast now because now he took your idea. So think of another one. Okay, I don't like listening to music while I'm trying to fall asleep. Okay, good. Don't like listening. Good. Okay, so you get one more to try. Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't mind sleeping late because I have a lot of homework to do. Um, you said you. Oh, you don't mind sleeping late. Yes. Okay. I would probably change that to I don't mind going to bed late. Okay. Going to bed. Is different from sleeping. It's a uh, action, right? It's, uh... Well, they're both action verbs. 
But um, going to bed, that means that it's like the beginning or it's um, yes. the beginning of sleep. But sleep is always, a, there's a length of time. So usually we use sleep oh, I, I got with it. the time. Like I yeah, slept I, for eight hours. I went yeah, to I, bed I, I, late. Yeah. I got it. Like if I see... I don't mind sleep sleeping late. It means like in the morning I get up late. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I got it. Or we usually would say I don't mind sleeping in. We say sleeping in. Yeah. I got it. I think that's something from my like um my native language customer. Okay. Is it the yeah. same? Yes. It, okay, uh, yeah. So I, I used to, like, uh, in my native language, I, uh, this is an order, like, how I express um, a sleep late. Like, uh, okay. go, to, uh, go to bed late. Mm -hmm. Right. Go to bed late. Is different from sleep sleep late or sleep in. So if I go to bed late and I sleep in, that means I maybe go to bed at 1 a.m. and I wake up at 11 a.m. That's what that would mean. Okay. So good example. Oh, you want to do another one? Okay, go ahead. Do one more and then we need to talk about prepositions. Okay. Go ahead, Amani. Can I can't stand getting in between two friends who are having an argument. Yeah, I can't stand getting between two friends that are having an argument. Getting, good, you used a gerund. Right. Okay, good job, guys. Now flip over a couple pages. Let's go to page 352. Um, have we studied prepositions before? I don't remember if we have or not. I uh, think so. so. I think that was my writing class that we did that. Okay, so prepositions. Prepositions are small words that we use to connect parts of the sentence, and they always have a noun after them. So when you think of preposition, I want you to think of words like in, at, to, from, of. I'm just going to write down some examples. Um, Already did. Uh, let's do four. Okay. So in, at, to, from, of, about, for. Those are all prepositions. Whenever we have a preposition, we always have to put a noun with it. Oh, I remember we did talk about prepositions with adjective clauses. Remember that? Object of a preposition. So we're doing the same kind of thing here, but we're putting a gerund as the object of the preposition. So we can do, um, like if I said, like this, I'm interested in building my own home in America. So where's the gerund? Building. Building. And then where's the preposition? In. 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 So we cannot say I'm interested to build or I'm interested in build. Um, we've got to keep the correct preposition 
and a gerund form if we want to use a form of a verb. So we're not going to put a base form verb or um, an infinitive. Okay, let me do one more example. And I think we're going to, yeah. Okay, so I'm tired of working late all the time. I'm tired of working late all the time. So again, we have a preposition of, and we have the gerund right after that. So that this gerund is the object of a preposition. Okay, does anybody have questions about that? I have a question. Yes. Uh, so, like, uh, one sentence I am thinking about is, I see I am tired of work late yesterday. I'm tired of what? Uh, like the past tense work late. Is that something we could see or not? I'm tired of I'm work late. Day. Sorry, it's kind of hard to hear you. You're saying I'm tired of to work late? Uh, work. Uh. I know you're typing it right now, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Let me put that sentence in red letters and let's look at it, okay? Did you say to work or just worked? Uh. Just worked. Like that? Is this the sentence you said? Oh, yesterday. I'm tired of worked late yesterday. Nope, we cannot say that. Um, we cannot do that, Young. Um, because gerunds, remember, gerunds are not, we can't show uh, the tense, right? with a gerund, we can't show that it's past. And we cannot put a past tense verb after a preposition. So that's why we can't do that one. But what we can do is this. I'm going to show you what we can do. This is what we would say. I was tired. So there's was. Was is telling you past, OK? That's the conjugated verb. I was tired after working late yesterday. And after is a preposition. You can use words like after, like, before to be prepositions. It can be prepositions. Yes. Got it. All right. So that's a good question. Okay, let's continue then if you guys don't have any more questions. I want to do some practice over here. Okay, so I have two sentences here. I've got, I want to going out this weekend. And I look forward to go out this weekend. Um, so we're going to focus for a moment on to, the word to. So what do you guys think about these? Um, I want you to click the raise your hand button if you think there's a mistake in number one. Yes. OK. Monty, yes. Walter, yes. Is there a mistake in the first one? Yes. Okay, Amani, what is the mistake? Uh, we cannot, can I use one? 
ing it's supposed to be infinitive so i want to go I'll go, want to go out good because want is a verb that means an infinitive after it so we're going to put two and then a base form verb go okay so that one we corrected now what about number two i look forward to go out this weekend is that one good no okay i think there's a mistake okay you already answered one let's see um Fei young or walter what about number two can you guys help me Do you think it's good or is there a mistake? Oh, yeah. I look forward to going out this weekend. Okay, so Walter, you're not sure or what or what? No, no, I'm not sure. I think it's correct. Okay. It looks, it looks, one has has two options. Oh nope, it doesn't have two options. Look at the look at the top of page three fifty two. Three fifty two. Can you find look forward to? Yeah, that means that one is correct. Yeah. Look for look forward to. Do you guys see that there? Yes. Okay, so what does that mean about the word to? Is that going to be part of an infinitive, like to go? Or is that or is that to going to be a preposition? It's a part of a preposition. I think it's gonna be a preposition. Yeah. So that means like Fei Young, I heard you gave the right answer. So good job. That means that we've got to change go. To going so isn't that kind of confusing right and number one we had to change going to go right it's supposed to be the base form and in number two we had to change go to going but they both have the word to in the front right before it so what I want you to realize is that when we have an infinitive the two in the infinitive is not a preposition. Okay. They call it a particle. It's basically connected to the base form, okay, to create an infinitive. That is totally different from two as a preposition. Okay. And a preposition goes with a gerund. So um look forward to is one example on your chart that has two as a preposition there are several more examples of prepositions and i want to show you guys some more okay look in the back of your books look in the back of your books at page 402 Okay. Now these are these um, some of these don't work very well with prepositions after them, but some of them do. Um, this list, I'm not even sure. Let's see. I'm not sure why, like which chapter this goes to. But the point is, I wanted you to see all the different combinations that we can use with prepositions and adjectives or verbs and I want you to look at some examples like on page uh, I'm looking for the verbs some of these are prepositions I mean some of these are adjectives okay um, the very first one be, to be accustomed to that one is to as a preposition so you can put a gerund after that I am accustomed to speaking English every day. And you also see on here used to, I am used to speaking English 
right? That's why we have to use that ing after the two, because these are prepositions. And I just, there was another one. Here, may I have a question? Yes, go ahead. Um, Gracie, I become more used to two. I have become more used to, or I became more used to, yes. Yes, you can use become with used to and a gerund. Okay. Um, it's almost time to go, guys, but I got one more for you. Let's see if you guys can do this together. Okay, so I want to use go to California for vacation. And I want to use I plan. So how do I connect that to the, the go to California? Anybody want to finish the sentence? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the first one, I will use yeah. in which is I plan to go to California for vacation. And the second one, the second one, I will use gerund, which will be, I plan on going to California for a vacation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Walter and Fei Young, do you think he's right? Infinitive in the first one, gerund in the second. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah, he's correct. So the meaning of these is the same, but the reason we change the gerund infinitive is because plan goes with infinitive and preposition on has to go with a gerund. Okay, one really big mistake that students make is they will try to put to going for a, a lot of things like, um, I mean, I just hear that a lot. They'll put two with a, a, a gerund instead of using the two correctly. Like, um, I feel like I'm taking another class, you know, or something like that. I, I see this a lot with language learners is there's like this disconnect with, is it infinitive or is it the gerund or is it a preposition with the gerund so i want to just uh, point that out it's common to make mistakes with two two is one of the hardest words to use when we we're talking about infinitives and gerunds so you guys are going to do some homework and practice putting these words and verbs together correctly okay anybody have questions before we get the homework for today. I have a grammar, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, from this uh, chart. OK, um, go ahead. I'll type up the, the homework, and you can ask your question. Uh, so I write down the sentence uh, below. What happened? Oh, Fei Young, we can't hear you. Um, so I write down the sentence here. Yeah. Is this yeah. uh Romani correct? One simple answer is that it is easier. Yeah, that's that's a good sentence. Um, so, someone read my uh, 
I know he's out. Uh -oh. um, uh, I think your reception is bad. It's hard, it's kind of hard to hear you. Try again. Ask your question. Yeah. Sorry, uh, the, the Wi-Fi is not um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the question is one. He he read my and he want me to change this sentence to a compound sentence. So he said this my my sentence uh, was um Gramni uh he wants me to change this sentence compound sentence. Okay. So how could um, I How could I answer like this? What is it, what is the structure of this sentence? It's a clause. Or a... Okay, I, you know what? I'm glad you asked this question because although I didn't understand everything you were saying because it was cutting out, I heard you say something about a compound sentence. Um, this one is not a compound sentence because what we have is a noun clause right here this is a noun clause so in our next chapter actually we're going to look at noun clauses how do we know if it's a noun clause i'll just tell you right now it's it's a group of words that has a subject and verb Oh. Okay, I'll read that comment just a second. <laughs> a noun clause has got a subject and verb, but it's acting as one thing or one noun. So, for example, I could say one simple answer is it. I could finish the sentence like that. I could say one simple answer is it or that. And that word, it, is a noun so when we make a noun clause that's what you've done here is you have put a subject and verb but together it's just one considered like a noun a thing so you said your friend the classmate said a sentence similar to this sentence was grammatically wrong but I don't know what your friend said like a different sentence was wrong. Maybe the difference, maybe the other sentence was wrong, but this one is good. Um, yeah, this is a long uh, call. I, um, yeah, um, when he pointed uh, out this, I, I don't know. What is the structure of my sentence? How I, I could answer him? Oh, okay. You didn't know the structure of it. Um, this is what I would call a complex sentence because you have, um, well, is it complex or is it simple? It's like a it's like a clause, but it's inside a main clause. Yeah. Yeah. So you only have one independent clause here. It's one simple answer is this. That's the um, that's the independent clause. But what you did was you took out the object it or that, and then you put in a noun clause in its place. So it's not compound. I would say this is a complex sentence because it has a dependent clause in it. Yes, I got it. Yeah, so that's what I would call this. Yeah, that's um, yes. so. Did I answer your question? Does yes. that help? Yes, yes. Okay. So, good questions. I like it when you guys bring questions from other classes or other, you know, life situations. Uh, because it really helps you to 
fully understand something so you can start using it in your own writing and speaking. So we are out of time for today, but um, I, I encourage you to keep asking questions in email if you want to. Um, your homework is to do the discussion board activity. I already put your partners, I listed the partners in the, the lesson folder, but just to let you know, Angelica, Maha, and Amani, the three of you are going to be partners. And then Fei Young and Walter, you two are partners. And then two is going to be partners with Soledad. Okay. So what you need to do is write questions that your partner can answer. Make sure you have a gerund or an infinitive in every question. Okay. And you post those in Blackboard and then you come back and answer your partner's questions and they will answer your questions. And so I'll be checking those throughout this weekend. Number two is to do exercises 12, 14, 19, and 22. Exercise 12 you need to do in an email because it requires you to make your own sentences. Okay, guys, any questions? Nope. You guys did great today. We're moving along. So um, I guess that's it for today. Um, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday.